Have you ever had to stand roadside waiting for that tow truck to load your car up just because it broke down and wouldn't let you go? Have you ever had to pay expensive diagnostic fees at the dealership because of an unexpected failure? Or have you ever had to replace an engine or transmission or other major part because it broke and cost you thousands of dollars? Well, I have. It's happened to me each and every one of those items and it's probably happened to you too. So nobody wants an unreliable vehicle and guess what? We've collected a list of five of the most unreliable car brands for 2024 you're going to want to avoid them like the plague. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. So the first vehicle brand that's clearly one of those that's an up and comer and it's very problematic for a lot of customers. This first vehicle that I'm speaking of is Rivian. Now Rivian, the R1T for example, is their pickup truck version and people are considering getting on board with Rivian as it's an all electric EV. Not everybody wants a Tesla Cybertruck. This is a great alternative, but the R1T because it's an up and comer does not come without some problems and problems there are. There's been lots of customers complain about service issues, taking the vehicle in to the dealership one step forward to fix a problem two steps back you have a new problem there's been complaints where the tonneau cover actually does not seal properly when you're closing it there's clunking strange noises quality problems water ingress and then it ends up rusting out your spare wheel so big problems there as well as some of your driver assistance programs have been a big problem a lot of it gets glared out in bright sunlight and all of a sudden some of those systems deactivate and as well there's been problems with their audio system and the infotainment not putting volume out it shows on the screen that it's working but in reality there's no audio so the r1t is one of those vehicles that's an up-and-comer and because it's a starter company you would expect some issues surprisingly enough it's not the worst vehicle on consumers reports list but in fact it is a problem and the Caribbean r1t is sadly one of those that makes a list of the most unreliable car brands the next one on our list of some of the most problematic vehicles has multiple sub-brands with it. What we're talking about is General Motors, which you can find vehicles like Buick, Chevrolet, or even GMC. As an example, we know that they actually had to put a stop work order on a lot of these Blazers, the EVs, because of electrical gremlins that they were having. Their infotainment systems weren't working. And then who goes and puts a turbo three-cylinder engine in there? You know it's a recipe for disaster. Here we have an RS version of the Cruze, and these vehicles have lots of issues. Electrical gremlins, and of course, because it's the Cruze, everybody knows that the body fitment, you get door panel sags, you get transmission issues that you fix one because it breaks and then three years later you put in another one we also know about hold pistons are a problem with some of these as well as coolant issues and potential timing chain troubles but we won't talk too much just about chevy because we know chevy has its share of issues but where you actually have one problem in one sub brand you're probably going to have problems very similar in some of the other manufacturers so specifically what we're talking about is general motors gmc the pickup trucks are where you're going to find some of the big issues in some of these late model vehicles up here the roof could actually fail they could actually split open and it there was actually a stop work order to stop outputting these vehicles until chevy or gmc like this are able to fix that and rectify that issue they're also known to have some of the weakest headlights now this is a revamp on the new generation but this older style here slightly weaker headlights lots of customers complain about that a lot of people talk about air conditioning condensers being a problem leaking and some of their transmission cooler lines engine oil leaks coolant leaks but there's a lot of big issues unfortunately with these where do you want to start in this redesign of 2022 you can can in fact get yourself a turbo v6 time will tell how reliable that is there's also 6.1 liter and in many cases there's a 6.2 liter v8 now the 6.2 liter v8 is recognized in some of these machines like this gmc right here you'll notice it denotes a 6.2 liter v8 there's lots of issues where extended crank time to get these vehicles running and a lot of cases they just crank and crank and crank for about 30 seconds and they may not even start there's other cases where it's just delayed and it will start and many cases where you're talking about broken lifters on these vehicles and yes the broken rocker issues with these vehicles often means it's rebuilt heads and so that's a partial engine rebuild and gmc is not necessarily always allegedly replacing complete engines under the even factory warranty and other problems not just with the v6 or the diesel which can be a problem we also talk about the infamous or famous 5.3 liter 
V8 like this. Now here we have, as you can see, the 5.3. These are great trucks. It's a great engine fundamentally, but then they had to go put that engine management system on there to actually reduce number of cylinder capacity, improve fuel economy, and that is what actually made that engine go bad. But there is also lifter rocker issues with some of these 5.3s that does cr create a lot of problems here for this vehicle. So sadly, all their engines, the diesels potentially, the 5.3s, the 6.2s, all have some issues and time will tell on the V6s, but that's a big problem. The older transmissions, also a problem. Lots of issues with some of the older transmissions from 2014 to about 2021, where you could have some problems with jerking, bucking, and if well, even potentially needing a full transmission replacement. Some other issues are wireless dock systems. And of course that 10 speed automatic transmission hasn't exactly been perfect. And then other owners complaining about issues with the GMC Sierra like this, for example, of the vehicle not necessarily holding in four wheel drive or locks into fifth gear and you can't get it out. There's been some transmission issues already complaining about that. Apple CarPlay, adaptive cruise control that actually doesn't work or cuts out randomly. So there have been a host of issues with some of these modern day vehicles and these latest and greatest generation of the GMC pickup trucks. Now they're beautiful trucks and it's one of the few place you can get you still get yourself a good old-fashioned v8 engine but unfortunately there are still there are still some quality issues with the transmission engine as well as body fitment and panels electronics we know some of those issues continue to go round and round so gmc does unfortunately rank as one of the worst vehicles the bottom for reliability based on consumers reports is this little rig right here we have kitty cat meow meow and of course this is an s what are we looking at it's the suv clearly i mean they do have some great headlights and beautiful rims look lots of great detail there and a fold away mirrors one touch accent in and as well you can do it on the back and it's a gorgeous looking unit look all the way around this is a pretty vehicle you do get all sorts of extra lots of sunroof on top to give you lots of light inside the cabin for all the happy customers riding around in there that's in between times and visits to the shop of course when these things are always broken down and we want to talk about this is the f-pace specifically their suv they have an e-pace and i-pace which is their all electric vehicle and as well they also have a great f-type which i bought because it has a snarling v8 that sounds like an angry cat and even with its problems it's still worth it because it's such a great car to drive this has a great Great real tail lights. Of course, Jaguar, it's beautiful, like a little fin on there. And of course, look at it. it's absolutely gorgeous in all of its glory right there. Beautiful vehicle. What we're talking about is an XF right here. High gloss wheels, of course, red calipers tucked underneath there. And of course, look at gorgeous headlights right here. Beautiful vehicles. But these come with their share of issues. You're talking about problems with the infotainment system up there. Of course, electrical issues. Of course, coolant leaks, not an uncommon issue with some of these vehicles. They've got cooling system here that seems to be quite fragile, very much like BMW land. And of course, timing chains can be a problem and electronics have been known to be a big issue. What about the F-Pace? Sadly, these vehicles come with their share of problems. Underneath here, of course, you do get a crankshaft that goes from your engine and your transmission, of course, to drive the rear wheels. Crankshaft is too short and the bolts have been known to shear. As well as the engine itself, crankshaft pulley bolt, too short, too weak, and they have been known to fracture. CO2 emissions due to programming that wasn't quite dialed in on some of these vehicles as well. Infotainment system on the screen, and I personally had this, and you get a SIM card that you actually have to plug in there and they've been known as well to just crash and burn. And then you have to basically take the vehicle in for further diagnostics. They send away. It took two weeks to get my SIM card replaced in my Jag F-Type and it's still never worked properly ever since. So clearly infotainment systems and some of the electronics are issues with some of these coolant problems. Of course, coolant issues. You can get the infamous Y pipe on certain engines, the V6, the V8s, and the SVR, and they can puke coolant all over, oil leaks. And transmissions generally aren't bad in most of the modern day Jags. Everybody gives them a hard time. But most modern day Jags are rocking the ZF 8 speed automatic. It can be a little abrupt, it can be a little aggressive, but it's generally pretty robust and it knows what the driver wants to do. So, generally speaking, from a fun perspective and a unique driving opportunity, the Jaguars are amazing from a pure reliability and problems that you can avoid, definitely Jaguar is going to be one of the worst vehicles for reliability based on consumers reports 
and even from my own personal experience. And we've got one more major brand before we get to the absolute worst Consumers Reports rated vehicle at the bottom of the barrel for overall reliability. But the next one in line is this little behemoth right here. Clearly we're talking about Land Rover. As you can see right here, Land Rover, we're talking about a Range Rover Sport. These are both sports right here. And over here we have a full-size Range Rover. But with the Range Rover World, you can also get an Evoque. That's their little subcompact as well as the Velar, which is a longer, sleeker looking Range Rover or Land Rover product. And of course there's Discoveries and many other product lines from the Land Rover group in general, but it's the Range Rovers that we're specifically talking about. Lots of problems. Of course they're gorgeous vehicles. Yeah, they have all the latest technology here. Supercharged V8 engines that make tons of power. Massive size wheels over here. Yes, they're 22 inch rims right here absolutely ginormous look you even get these giant red calipers gorgeous and of course these very aggressive looking rocker panels takes you up to these two-tone door handles absolutely gorgeous right there on both sides of course you do get sunroof on top and a glorious eight-speed zf automatic transmission that makes this car shift and drive like a rock star beautiful taillights in this range rover by land rover right here and it's the sport HST as we see right here and these are great until it comes time to service them now a lot of people say I've had mine for a year and it's been great well that's just it it's hit and miss it's inconsistent some of people can get through with a few minor issues like CarPlay kicking them in and out or having some random issues with electronics with the infotainment system with their navigation like I've had with my f-type Jag because they're from the same family Tata Motors and the overall JLR group is very very similar so they can get away with some reasonable issues like that but with time, you're going to start anticipating issues. The older supercharged V8s for a while, they had timing chain issues that would pile up. You had the infamous Y pipe on your V6 V8 engines, specifically on the Range Rovers, they had the V8. Of course, you could puke coolant there and it'd leave you stranded or just overheat your engine. Transmission was pretty good, but you would get carbon fouling at the tailpipes right there. Carbon fouling coming out. CO emissions is quite high on these vehicles as well. Body panels sometimes can leave a little bit to be desired. Not uncommon for bits and pieces to fall off these vehicles. People have experienced some of those types of problems. But there's even more issues when you talk about the Velar, where they have the flush door handles that actually lock up because they get iced over. Same thing as you're seeing on the full-size Range Rover like this. You can get ice in here, and then of course you can't get that door open or closed. You can get water ingress in some of these vehicles, they say from the window right there, and then you wind up with water inside the vehicle. Air ride suspension right here. As you can see, it's sitting down on its rump because the airbags settle down. It's got an air suspension for a softer, cushier ride, and that's known to settle down. And those airbags can get a very expensive air compressor too. Very, very expensive components. And of course, a whole host of electronic issues in a lot of these vehicles. Many people complain as well, faulty brakes, squeaking, and all kinds of strange noises, as well as the electronic brake. You get the electronic brake trigger, of course, can cause problems. The ABS system has been known to illuminate the light on the dash and create a lot of problems electronically there. Far, far too complex of a vehicle. Transmissions have been a problem from time to time in certain generations. Also, people talking about sunroof issues and leaking and moisture coming in through the sunroof. And as well, the rear differential back down under there has been known to be problematic too. From time to time with maintenance, they seem to be a very maintenance intensive component. And leaks are a problem as well as proper venting is a big issue with some of these vehicles, the JLR group, I know with the F-Type R, they always talk about that too. And some of these vehicles have problems with some of the rear differentials and the transfer case problems. So the Range Rovers, just because they're so expensive, you've essentially got to own the kings and queens net worth. If you don't, you're not going to likely be able to afford one of these far outside of warranty without actually literally just turning this vehicle into a glorified lawn ornament. They're too expensive, unreliable, and the parts are out of this world. And then lastly, the biggest loser for Consumers Reports, vehicles with a whole host of issues. Rattly engines, slipping transmissions, expensive air ride suspensions that can fail, death wobble that'll actually keep your vehicle unstable and dangerous at highway speeds, and a heaping pile of other major catastrophic issues ensures that the majority of these Jeep products wind up at the bottom of the barrel for overall reliability. We're clearly looking at the Wrangler right here. Clearly we know that there's a lot of issues. We have water ingress, big problems. Water gets in, shorts out electrics. Tip them, totally integrated power module that can fault out. That affects all your electrics, your lights, your mirrors, your windows. And if that fails, it might even be a fail to run to start. Fuel pumps fed off of there as well. 
coolant leaks, you have throttle position sensor issues, and under here, you can get death wobble under there because that suspension parts wear out. And then that vehicle can become just a downright unstable, ornery, and a little awkward. Quite dangerous, actually. Vehicles like this glorious tank on wheels, we have the Wagoneer. And it's their big granddaddy. They're trying to compete with all the largest full-size SUVs on the market. But there's issues. A lot of people complaining. Some people saying, hey, they enjoy theirs. Other people saying they're losing all their pixels on their display. They're having infotainment system issues technology problems, accident avoidance position issues, transmission shifting problems, but specifically the big one it seems to be a rattly engine on startup, which often sounds like the old Hemi rattle in some cases. Some people say it goes away in short order. As some people say it hangs around for a while. It does not inspire confidence in a new vehicle that costs as much as this in six figures should not do that. Right here we have the infamous Cherokee right here. As you notice, this is another problematic vehicle. They're known for just randomly stopping inadvertently while you're driving down the road. There's also issues with the nine-speed automatic transmission, which is a Sputnik of sorts. It has a host of issues. Some people say programming got it sorted out, but a lot of people say it never really fixed the issue. Regardless, suffice it to say, quality issues are a big issue with some of these. We also can't forget about the Renegade, the 2.4 liter Tiger Shark engine. Absolutely a problem, burns oil, burns gas, and it's just heavy on CO emissions. We also can't forget about the Compass on the way out of the door because people aren't loving that vehicle all that much. It's not showing a lot of love. They're charging a lot of money for it and the quality isn't there when comparing it to other vehicles in its classic, the CRV and the Toyota RAV4. And then the Jeep Grand Cherokee is a very popular choice, the Quadrolift. As you get into the upper scale versions of these, you can get that Quadrolift system and it gets very expensive when they fail and they do fail. And as well, you talk transmission issues, drivability issues. Remember a few years ago where you put that your, in, your transmission in gear and it didn't actually lock it, they got out to go and open a gate and then the vehicle inadvertently rolled away, crushing the driver. A very dangerous situation that happened. Looks like they fixed that now, but there's also been issues with some of the dashboard materials piling up on itself and general quality and fit and finish hasn't necessarily been all that stellar. So the Jeep Grand Cherokee isn't one of their best options either. Very popular, but not necessarily one of the most reliable. So maybe you're just one of the diehard Jeep fans. You liked what it represents. You like the way that it goes off-roading or you're just a glutton for punishment. Either way, you now have the the information you need to know going out there shopping for your new vehicle. If you want a vehicle that's going to potentially leave you in the shop many times and cost you thousands of dollars repairs, this might be your bet. But in fact, there may be a better options. If you want to avoid some of those problems, definitely look on the other end of the scale for some of the most reliable vehicles that you can find for 2024. And with all of that said, right there, the most reliable vehicles of 2024. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye. Phew. <laughs>